Hey folks, in this video we dive deeper into the character of James Hudson, the son of Logan. Now let's get into the nitty gritty details of James' origin story and explore his extraordinary mutant abilities. But before we proceed, let's rewind to James' initial introduction. He was just your average teenage rebel at that time, displaying a shared affinity for the iconic Red Hez, much like his biological father. This connection became evident through his girlfriend Tammy as depicted in the first panel. You may already know that a person's mutant powers often emerge during a traumatic event or challenging circumstances. Considering James' age of 16, it's safe to assume he has faced his fair share of adversity. However, in a dramatic turn of events, his mutant powers manifest during a thrilling drag race. While leading the race, an unexpected blowout causes his car to somersault uncontrollably. What captivates me about Jeff Loeb's storytelling approach is the narrative voice of James' adoptive father. Through his perspective, we learn about his past camaraderie with Logan during their time in Iraq. Logan saved his life on multiple occasions and played matchmaker, introducing him to his beloved wife, Heather. When Logan entrusted his son James to him, he felt indebted and had no choice but to embrace fatherhood. As the accident unfolds, the resulting explosion is nothing short of colossal. James's concerned friends rush to the scene, desperately hoping he's unscathed. Eventually, he emerges from the wreckage, gruesomely battered and broken. Tammy, his loyal girlfriend, is among the first to reach him, witnessing the grotesque sight. As James extracts metal fragments resembling rocks from his body and his bones audibly snap back into place, Tammy cannot help but exclaim, You're one of those mutants? Ew! I was about to let you hit! Still in shock, James vehemently denies his mutant identity, pleading, No, I'm not one of them! Please, just listen to me! In his disoriented state, James grapples with the magnitude of the situation as he has never faced an injury so life-threatening before. Just as the sheriff arrives at the scene, we discover that the sheriff is Jimmy Hudson Sr., James' adoptive father, who ensures he is the first responder, whisking James away to prevent unwanted inquiries. Following the incident, Jimmy Sr. and his wife engage in a heartfelt discussion, plagued by the shadows of James' biological father. They hint at the truth about his real lineage, acknowledging their role in saving him from a potential life of crime. Yet, they struggle to master the courage to reveal the identity of his true parentage. Now, let's quickly detour to a previous installment in the Wolverine series to shed light on James' biological parents. Magna Linshare is Magneto's wife, working undercover but eventually falling in love with him and bearing his twins. Magneto swiftly absconded with their children when Magna's cover was blown, leaving a trail of unanswered questions in his wake. Later, Magna Linshare found solace in a relationship with Logan that starkly contrasted her previous one with Eric. Their connection was built on transparency, as she openly revealed her past as a spy and her involvement with Eric and their twins. Even in the rare instances when their missions intersected, Logan remained aware of her actions. For instance, both pursued a potent substance known as the Mother Vine, a drug capable of birthing genetically enhanced mutants that could be weaponized. However, she kept an important secret from Logan. She had injected herself with the drug to smuggle it, unaware she was pregnant. Despite this, Magdalene Cher genuinely had the best interests of their unborn child in mind. She sought out Logan, divulging the truth about the Mother Vine, their son, and urging him to find someone trustworthy, capable of raising their child while keeping him hidden from their respective employers, who would surely pursue them once the child's existence was revealed. It's important to note that Magdalene Cher handed Logan a drive containing crucial information that would aid James in understanding his heritage and navigating his abilities as he grew older. However, at this moment, Magdalene Shear became aware she was being followed. She knew Logan's employers were closing in, having heard the baby's cries during their phone conversation. With resolve, she suggested that Logan stab her, allowing them to leave a trail of blood to divert their pursuers. Logan didn't hesitate. He pierced her with a knife mid-sentence, a painful act influenced by his disappointment in her choice to inject herself with the drug, endangering their child's well-being. Yet, despite his conflicted emotions, his face reveals a mix of sorrow and heartache as he witnesses their separation. Returning to the earlier issue, James's father's reference to a stranger arriving on his doorstep with a crying child was, in fact, about Logan's unexpected arrival. Now let's shift our focus to Ultimate X issue number one, where the night following James's accident, he is awakened by Kitty Pride, who visits him the very next day. It's no mere coincidence. The dialogue between them is intriguing, with Kitty asking if they can talk elsewhere, away from the threat of alligators. James, skeptical, questions why he should leave with her. Keep in mind, the X-Men are known during this time, but not everyone may be familiar with each member. 
Wolverine and Cyclops might be more recognizable, but the general public possesses only a broad understanding of the X-Men. Interestingly, when James agrees to accompany Kitty, she entices him by offering candy. Meanwhile, James's mother observes her departure, her gaze filled with emotions. Ultimately, James finds a secluded spot by the docks, just as Kitty requested, a tranquil setting where they can converse. Kitty said, I have something for you. With a tinge of disappointment, James responded, it's not candy, is it? You can almost hear the letdown in his voice as you read the panel. However, Kitty surprises him by presenting a box filled with Logan's items, entrusted to her to give to James after Logan's demise. In the 1610 universe, Logan's death took a different turn. He faced off against Magneto, reaching a point where he had enough. He mentioned that he had held back in previous encounters with Magneto, but he unleashed his full fury this time. Apart from the hatred we previously discussed, this Magneto had also killed Charles Xavier, making it a deeply personal battle. Logan exploded into action, landing several powerful blows on Magneto. Meanwhile, Jean Grey was in Logan's mind, urging Scott to stop him, as Logan was determined. It's at this moment that we witness Magneto's twisted nature. He used his powers to lift Scott's visor, overpower Iron Man's armor, and unleash a devastating attack on Logan, stripping away his skin, muscles, and nearly everything except his bones. Let me tell ya, this is one of the most astounding demonstrations of Wolverine's healing factor ever portrayed. As soon as his tendons were generated enough to move, he lifted his hand and impaled Magneto. The flesh and muscle rapidly began to knit back together mind-bogglingly. However, with a final surge of strength, Magneto managed to disintegrate the adamantium within Wolverine's skeleton completely. This time, Magneto ensured that nothing remained, reducing it to ashes, vanishing into dust. Immediately, remorse filled Magneto's heart. Realizing the magnitude of his actions, he said, Charles will forgive me for what I did. But Cyclops responded, No, there is no Charles. You killed him too. Nobody will forgive you. In an instant, Cyclops obliterated Magneto's face. He was gone, completely eradicated. But let's return to the events in Ultimate X, where James and Kitty explore the box's contents, uncovering various mementos belonging to Logan. They found pictures of the X-Men, Logan's dog tags, and even a strand of Jean Grey's hair, as Logan was fond of redheads. As James rummaged through the box, he stumbled upon a hard drive his mother gave Logan. It contained all the information he needed to catch up on his identity and find answers to any lingering questions. Although no explicit evidence supports it, I believe Logan recorded this message the same night Magdalene left Jimmy on his doorstep. The panel also depicted Logan leaving with the child to escape the danger and ensure he would be placed in a secure location under the care of someone trustworthy. The timing suggests that Logan may have created the message that night unless he held on to the disc a bit longer after leaving Jimmy and eventually passed it on to Kitty Pride. The message left by Logan was concise and direct. He confirmed that he was James' father and reassured him that he didn't have to follow in his footsteps. James had his future ahead, with the power to make decisions and forge his path. Logan also mentioned that he had shared some ideas about James' future with Kitty, enlisting her support to guide him along the way. In his final words, Logan tells James, Hey kid, for what it's worth, I never regretted having you as a son. These words deeply affect James, and he becomes eager to ask Kitty more questions. He wonders if he has the same claws as his father, which can come out of his hands. Filled with curiosity, Kitty encourages James to give it a try. Without hesitation, James extends his claws, and it's a gory sight as blood splatters all around. But soon, the pain disappears, leaving James astonished. Something fascinating happens next. As Kitty starts explaining the adamantium, a special metal attached to his father's claws by the government, a strange metallic substance begins to cover James's claws and skeleton. This surprises James, and he asks Kitty if she has seen anything like this before. Kitty shares her knowledge, mentioning how another mutant named Colossus could cover his skin, skeleton, and teeth with a similar organic metal. She talks about a fierce battle between Colossus and his brother, where he used his metal-coated fangs to attack. With that, James concludes his discussion about himself, giving viewers a better understanding of his background, mutant powers, and connection to Wolverine. Excitingly, there's news that James will join the X-Men Blue team. Although the series is still new, James plans to read more issues to learn about this development. He's reminded of the original Blue team from another comic universe, and is curious to see how James will take on the mantle of Wolverine. James might choose a new name, or follow Logan's advice about creating his path, which interests him. In summary, Logan's parting words leave a lasting impact on James, igniting his curiosity. 
With Katie's guidance, James discovers his claws and witnesses a strange metallic coating similar to what his father had. This revelation opens up a new world of possibilities for James as he explores his mutant abilities and prepares to join the X-Men Blue Team. The future holds exciting adventures as James follows in his father's footsteps while forging his unique path.